got the newly in black C2 about to go up on the ramp. I think that auxiliary belt sounds a bit squeaky. Right, so we've got the black C2 up in the air. We've just been all over it, inspecting it. Let's have a little look over it. We start, let's start at the front. That makes sense. We've got new air conditioning condensers in the front, which you just love to see. It's also had a new air conditioning pipe along the seal here. However, you can see in the background there, we reckon someone must have butchered putting the seal in because there's green dye everywhere here. So that's going to be that union back there that you've seen us do before. Move over to the other side. The brake line along the seal, it's, yeah, it's reasonable. Again, we'll give it a little bit of a clean up and protection as usual. Come to the back of the car. Straight away, you can see it's had brand new back boxes. They're top gear units. We haven't got a wet rear main seal, but we're doing the IMS bearing rear main seal and clutch. What else have we got new on here? We've got a new water pump, if we can see it from here. I don't think we really can. We've got a new water pump, we've got a new thermostat on there as well. You can see there. Right, now let's go over the things that we're doing to the car. So we're doing the rear discs and pads on the brakes. Can't see very well, but the back faces are in a real sorry state. We're also doing the front drop links. We've got a knot from the front suspension. So we're doing the front drop links, both sides. The shock bodies are gonna be cleaned up in all four corners as is often required. The bump stops, top mounts and bearings aren't new, but they're not in bad shape. So we're not gonna replace those this time around. It's on lowering springs. As you can see, the H&R lowering springs drop the car by, we think about 15 mil, because this car was on MO30 suspension originally. So it was already dropped by 10 mil. What else have we got? We've got an alarm double beep issue that we've got to sort out. It'll be given a full service. It needs a set of wipers, an auxiliary belt, the engine lid and um, bonnet struts are weak, so we'll be doing those. We need a rear near side tyre. That's low and nearly on the limit. The other side is fine. That's it, isn't it? Coil pack heat shields are corroded and we'll replace those. Is that everything? Yeah. Cool. Right, it's the end of another very hot day at Friends Green Porsche. We finished off the black C2 today. It's taken a little while this car, so a fair bit of work. So what I'm gonna do is put it up in the air and do the usual kind of going around it and showing the work that's been done. So here we are underneath then. It's at a major service, which is all the fluids and all the filters and the auxiliary belt actually, we did two. It's had coil packs as well as coil pack heat shields. As you can see, back boxes were already new, you've already seen them. We've got new discs and pads on the rear. You can probably see better from this side. There you go, they've just started to bed in. Car's been for a test drive. Well, it's been for more than that actually, but we'll go into that in a sec. The gearbox has been out and it's had the IMS bearing, rear main seal and clutch done. We'll go further forward now. Oh, we've just done the air con. So as I said before, it had a new air conditioning condenser and a new pipe along here. However, they made a mess of the join here. There's a union behind there and there's a seal in there. And as you saw before, there's all green fluid over here. We've cleaned up a bit now. So I had to go down, get the gas taken out. The gas, the system was still half full. Get that taken out, depressurize it. Can't let that out into the atmosphere. And uh, Dan took that apart and put a new seal in there. So tomorrow that's got to be gassed back up. It's had new drop links on the front to rectify that knock that there was. As you can see. It's had new struts on the bonnet, new struts on the engine lids, things like the shocks have been cleaned. 
We had a beep from the alarm after you locked the car. Dan fixed that. It was a problem with the micro switch somewhere on the car. Um, the tire. So we had one rear low tire. So I had a pair of very good Michelin Pilot Sports. And as you can see, they've got about seven and a half mil of tread on them. Uh, N-rated Pilot Sport 2s. Changed the pair, even though there was only one bad one, so that they're the same both sides. And a set of wipers. That's everything. So there we go. It's a really nice car. Now, what I was saying about the test drive. Somebody came today. They organised it over the weekend. It's Tuesday today. The car wasn't finished. So today, somebody's come down this afternoon, test drove the car, and there's a deposit left on that as well. So there you go. Another car sold before the video has gone live. It's becoming a bit of a habit. I'm going to get that down now. Get the Zenith blue one out from there somehow and uh, get that on the ramp. Professional at work, that. Yeah. I want to see this as well. When it's finished, you need to show you when it says okay. Then... So it's balanced. Does it need much weight? 30 and 10. Is that a lot? No. Nice it's... and straight? And, and it's nice and straight. And straight yeah. Not been smashed into a curb. Other they were because they look quite new. Yeah, they don't look bad, do they? Thirty-six in the front. Thirty-six. on the inside. There you go. Okay. The old tyres were fine. Where are they? They were just Kumo, and the chap wanted Michelin, so just as part of the deal. Kumo, they're not bad tyres. They're okay, aren't they? They are legitimately mid-range tyres. They, do they were brand spanking they new. Wear yeah. they wear They're not Michelin Pilot Sports though. Right, I'm afraid to say that this video is also going to be compromised now, like the one from two videos ago with the two C2s, where I wanted to compare a pre facelift with a facelift C2. I wanted to get the Zenith early C2 out on the road and the black one, the facelift black one out on the road, back to back, and talk about the differences between the two. But as I mentioned earlier, the black one has sold and I'm on my way now, I'm just about to leave, to go and pick the trap up from Stevenage train station and uh, yeah, do the handover. So we're not gonna be able to do that. I'm gonna put the GoPro in the car quickly and have a very quick talk about it. So as you saw earlier in the video, I was down at the MOT center. I had the MOT test done and we were changing over some tires. Now, earlier in the video, we spoke about the rear tires. There was Pirelli's on there and the near side was low on tread. So it was always planned to change those. I had a set of Michelin Pilot Sports in stock with seven mil tread, so they went on. However, when the customer came to look at the car, he didn't like the front tires because they were Kumo's. Now, Kumo's are a mid-range tire, but they're not the proper N-rated tires for a Porsche. So it was understandable. Now, usually, a Porsche without the proper bells and whistles tires is a big turn off to me because it says to me, the car's been ran cheaply. Where else has the owner skimped and saved? However, the circumstances here, as he was selling it, he just put these tires on, they were brand spanking new. So he was obviously putting them on to sell the car. He hadn't been running it on cheap tires. So it didn't put me off with this particular car. Anyway, 
We've now put Michelin Pilot Sports on the front as well to match. I've got a company over in Germany. There's some sort of law where when lease deals run out or something, the tyres have to be swapped over, even if they've still got like 7 mil worth of tread left. So I get them from them. And um, yeah, we've got four Michelin Pilot Sport twos with 7 mil of tread all round. So I'm now off down to the train station to pick the guy up and do the handover. Okay, I'm off to the train station to pick up the new owner of this lovely C2, the facelift car. And although the video is compromised, I can't do the two back to back. I've only got this limited quick five mile drive down to the train station. I will quickly speak about the differences between this car and what an early car would provide. What will be in that Zenith Blue car that you'll see later in the video out on the road. Now, as I've said before in previous videos, spec. Now the newer cars, the facelift, they usually pretty much always come with better spec. This car's got a Bose sound system, which is really good with the sub behind the rear seat. I've got the PCM satellite navigation. I've got heated seats in this car, Alcantara headlining. They always come with the three prong steering wheel. The early cars can come with the more square steering wheel rather than the three prong steering wheel. So yeah, specs are a big difference between the two cars. Power wise, I'm just driving down this lane now. The car's not hot. So I'm in the lower end of the rev range. When I put my foot down, there's far more torque there. That's the main difference between the 3.6 litre engine in this car and the 3.4 litre engine in the pre-facelift car. It's the torque more than the peak power. Although this has got 20 horsepower more, 320 horsepower, whereas the early car's got 300 horsepower, the 3.4 litre engine. It's that torque that's the noticeable difference. Now these later cars, the facelift cars, they're a bit more refined in, inside. Cheers, mate. So they've got a bit more sound deadening and they're just a bit bit quieter, a bit more refined in, inside, like I say. Now, other mechanical aspects. Gearbox, clutch, exactly the same. They've got the exact same feel to them. The throw's the same on the shifter. The clutch is the same weight. It's nice and light having had a new clutch this car with the IMS bearing while it's been through our workshop. The handling, the steering weight, again, exactly the same. The brakes on the car are also the same. It's not a Carrera 4S, we're just talking about a Carrera 2, so it's got the same size brakes. So yeah, to drive, very, very similar, other than it feels a bit more refined inside. You've got a little bit more power, and more noticeably, you've got more torque. Now this particular car, just going away from talking about Carrera 2s generally speaking, as we said earlier in the video, it's got the MO30 Sport chassis. So it is a sporty ride, and on top of that, it's been lowered by, we think, another 15 or 20 mil. Now I'm currently going over speed bumps, I don't know if you can tell by the jolts. If you look at the pictures on the advert, or I'll put a picture up now on the screen, although it looks very low, when you lower these Porsches, they still go over speed bumps like this absolutely fine. So these speed bumps are quite hefty old bumps in the road, and it's not bottoming out. The front of the bumper isn't scraping the speed bump itself. So yeah, it's still very practical, even though it's been lowered. Now, although I don't usually like modifications to Porsches, and I like them to be stock, and as they came out of the factory, I don't actually mind kind of subtle and tasteful modifications that actually improve the car. So for example, I don't mind, and actually quite like, how this car's been lowered slightly, because it makes it feel a little bit more sporty and a bit more agile. So I think it's improved the drive of the car, without compromising the ride quality or getting over speed bumps like you've just seen. I think you've got to be careful with things like lowering a car though. If you'd lowered this any more, I think it would start to become a pain. I think the front bumper would start to bottom out on slopes and those speed bumps, you start bottoming out the middle of the car. And I also think it starts to become crashy. Now, why this car works quite well on the lowering springs 
is because it's got that MO30 sport suspension, which means it's got stiffer shock absorbers. Now, if you had a standard one of these cars, without the sport suspension, without the MO30 package, the shock absorbers wouldn't be as stiff and therefore it wouldn't handle the lowering springs as well. And they would start to become a bit crashy sooner if you lowered it too much. And just be careful of that if you're thinking about lowering your 996 or your 911 or whatever car you've got. So I'm just about to pull up at the train station in lovely Stevenage town centre and hand the car over to its new owner. And as you've seen throughout the video, it's had loads of work done. I think he's going to be really happy with it. It's a bit of a shame I didn't get to go for a proper drive in it and a proper comparison with the Zenith Blue early car, but there we go. So yeah, I'm going to end this clip now.